Hello, today we study collisions in one dimension and quantum tunneling. In particular, we are interested in the study of a collision with a potential barrier and we have, let's say, this form. It is not really important the form, the shape of the barrier, but um, the important is that it has, the potential has definite finite values at infinite. So by convention we put the potential equal to zero at x minus infinite and let's say a value u infinite at x equals infinite. So we will locate the barrier around the zero um, and we will study the effect of the collision of particles, uh, the effect of the collision on particles um, which come from minus infinite to plus infinite and they collide with this barrier, some of them will be reflected, some of them will be transmitted. The incoming particles will have uh, a definite momentum, P equals K H bar, and an energy of W K equals H squared, um, H bar squared, K squared, divided by 2M. So they will be described by uh, wave function Psi, in psi incoming, um, this is a function of the incoming particles, um, and k a normalization constant times the exponential of i k x minus i w k t divided by h bar. Since we are only interested in the effects of the collisions, we are going to study the particles at the infinity, so far from the potential barrier. Um, after the collision and so these were the particle we started with before the collision the incoming particles and after the collision we will have um, reflective particles which will be located there um, also at minus infinity because they come back so um, it w we will have psi reflected of x equals nk um, rk rk basically uh, his modulus measures the fraction of reflected particles and we have exponential of now the momentum of the reflected particles would be minus k um, because uh, they are reflected and so they go uh, the other way uh, the opposite way at the, the incoming particles um, so we have minus k x uh, minus i w k t divided by h bar remember that the energy at minus infinity will be uh, u plus wk, u is zero, so this will be uh, simply wk at minus infinity. Instead, at plus infinity, the energy will be e equals um, wk infinite plus u infinite. Um, k infinite because when they collide with the potential, the transmitted particle um, will have um, another momentum. Uh, the moment uh, the momentum is modified um, so that we have momentum k infinite and in particular by the conservation of energy we must have the energy before the collision equals the energy after the collision so wk equals wk infinite plus u infinite and from this uh, relation we can find the potential so we can find the uh, momentum k infinite of the transmitted particles uh, which would be k infinite um, equals um, let's write h squared k infinite squared divided by 2 and uh, equals double k minus u infinite um, so um, k infinite would be the square root of this divided times 2n divided by h bar squared. So we see in particular that um, when wk, so the initial energy of the particles is greater than u infinite, wk is real. When, uh, sorry, k infinite is real. When wk is less than u infinite, this would be imaginary. And if now we write um, the expression psi um, transmitted of the transmitted particles 
it would be nk now we will have dk uh, which is which modulus is a measure of the fraction of transmitted particles times the exponential of now we have i k infinite x minus i w k t and remember that w k is w k infinite plus infinite divided by h bar in particular um, we know that we can write psi of x as as the spatial part um, this was in fact psi of uh, psi of x t if you want to want to emphasize that it the uh, spatial and time dependent Schrodinger equation so psi of x t would be psi of x the spatial part uh, times the exponential this exponential here minus i w k t divided by h bar so instead of the psi now we can write only the spatial part because we are interesting in the time independent problem so we we write the exact same expressions but dividing by this um, so we, we write psi uh, in of x equals nk exponential of i k x psi reflected of x equals n k r k exponential of minus i k x and psi transmitted of x equals n k t k exponential of i k infinite of x and we had seen that k infinite is the square root of 2m divided by h bar squared of w k minus u infinite so from this um, when w k we have two cases when w k is greater than u infinite um, this is real so this is imaginary so we will have a sinusoidal wave uh, also um, after the barrier and if w k is less than u infinite we will have a, a decaying exponential because we will have an imaginary number for k infinite so i times i is minus uh, we have minus a positive number times times x uh, x will be positive a plus infinite so this will decay at plus infinite um, we write it here so we will have um, in this case uh, the incoming way will be um, sinusoidal and it will decay after the tension barrier and in this case it will continue to be sinusoidal it will be just modulated by um, the new um, TK so it will have uh, will probably be smaller so like this now we see that um, the, these functions are not normalizable but we can see that in this case some of the particles um, will be transmitted um, so when wk is greater than w infinite we will have transmitted particles so um, notice by the way that um, here in this equation only wk and u infinite appear if you remember the the exponential graph of the if you remember the graph of the potential energy we will have um, here it reaches u infinite it starts from zero and here it we have probably a maximum u max uh, um, u max does not uh, is not in these equations if u max is greater probably t k would be smaller but um, we will still have some particles uh, crossing the barrier the value of u max will, um, will tell us something about the coefficients tk, rk but um, even without calculating these coefficients with a particular 
shape of the, of the potential, we already discovered that we must have always um, some particles over the barrier when WK is as long as the energy WK we start with is greater than U infinite and it does not need to be greater than U max. This was not possible in uh, classical physics. This is a particular feature of quantum mechanics and it is called the quantum tunneling. So particles which have smaller energy than the potential barrier can cross the barrier. Instead of reasoning about no normalizable functions, we can see this better with current densities. Remember the expression of the current density is h bar divided by m, the imaginary part of psi star times the derivative d phi, sorry phi star times the derivative d phi dx. And remember that at minus infinity we will have the incoming particles and the reflected particles and at plus infinity we will have the transmitted particles. So to conserve the probability that we will need j in plus j reflected equals the probability density at plus infinite, so j transmitted. So now we calculate j incoming, j incoming is um, h bar divided by m, the imaginary part of um, this um, complex conjugate, so it we have mk, um, mk also the, it will be the derivative, um, then the exponentials would cancel out and we are left with the term of the derivative i k here instead in j reflected we have h bar divided by m and the imaginary part of n k squared r k squared because they would be n k r k would be both in psi in pi star and in the derivative and then we will have um, the exponential will cancel out and we will have minus i k which come from the derivative instead j transmitted would be h bar divided by m the imaginary part of this which will be n k squared like this but with n k t k so n k squared t k squared and with k infinite so i k infinite remember that k is represents the momentum of the incoming particles uh, so it is a real number so we can put it um, outside and we will have h bar divided by m times k and k squared we are taking the imaginary parts and here we will have h bar divided by m times and k squared yeah, we write actually the modulus squared because these can be complex coefficients so modulus of nk squared um, times modulus of rk squared times minus k here instead we have now we don't have k, we have k infinite and remember that k infinite by this expression can also be imaginary so we, we have to take the real part of k infinite right because when we take the imaginary part of i times k infinite um, we are taking the real part of k infinite so we will have h bar divided by m times nk squared modulus of tk squared times the real part of k infinite. Now we can obtain a relation for the coefficients rk and tk by this equation um, but uh, we multiply everything by m divided by h bar and we divide by 
uh, n k squared modulus n by k. So here we will have one. Basically, we are dividing by uh, j in. Um, so we are writing this. And here we have one plus uh, j ref divided by j in, which is minus modulus of rk squared and equals this transmitted divided by incoming um, and it is modulus of tk squared times the real part of k infinite divided by k. Now we calculate the equivalent of the cross sections for the reflected particles and the transmitted particles so the cross section for the reflected particle will be rk equals modulus of j reflected divided by modulus of j incoming and instead the cross section for the transmitted particles will be tk equals modulus of j transmitted divided by j incoming so rk would be the modulus of rk squared this one here and instead tk would be this one here so um, this is rk this is tk and we have the relation 1 minus rk equals tk that we can write as rk plus tk equals 1 and we see that they add up to 1 and it makes sense since they represent the probabilities of particles being reflected and particles being transmitted and now we see what we had guessed before that we have the case where w k is less than u infinite in which case um, k infinite is imaginary and the real part of k infinite will be zero so we have no transmitted particles and we will have only reflected particles so if we start with um, an energy which is smaller than the energy the potential energy at infinite we we have only reflected particles and no particle will overcome the barrier instead if we have wk greater than u infinite we will have this different from zero because k infinite will be real and so some particles are transmitted so tk is greater than zero and how many particles it will depend on the shape of the potential uh, particularly on the height of the barrier so um, on u max um, so we what we have done here uh, was not studying the particular shape of the barrier and uh, connecting these um, coefficients precisely to the values of the barrier but we but we have shown that nevertheless uh, whatever the height of the barrier is we will have some particle transmitted um, as long as we have wk greater than u infinite um, so this is the quantum tunneling this tells nothing about um, how many particles will overcome the barrier but it is interesting nevertheless to have show the existence of this phenomenon uh, which is not possible in classical physics this should not be surprising since the nature of matter in quantum mechanics is very different from the nature of matter in classical mechanics we are not dealing with particles anymore we are dealing with wave functions also i have realized now that i have been saying barrier instead of barrier um, i hope that is not a problem and that it was understandable anyway this is all for today see you next time it has been a pleasure